Hello, we are on day 20 and today I'm reading Mark 15, 16 to 47. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace that is called the Praetorium and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spat on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him, and when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in, in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast loads to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you, who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on his stuff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who stood there in front of Jesus, saw how he died, he said, Surely, this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, in Galilee these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimath Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen clothes, cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen and placed it in a tomb, cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. Jesus died on the cross for us. And although his death was a horrible happening. It is not hopeless. And Jesus did that because he loves us and because he wants us to be in relationship with God. Because of our sin, there was this burden, there was a boundary between us and God that we couldn't overcome. We don't have the power, the strength to overcome that. But because of this story and because Jesus gave everything, he gave his life, because of that, we can come to God and we can build the relationship to God. 
and Jesus gave everything. And it wasn't only Jesus. God gave his own son. He loved his son as much as he loved us. But he decided to send, send Jesus down and to, cruci to let him crucify. And he didn't, he didn't want Jesus to be crucified. But because he loves us so much, he did that. And I think this is such a... I think it's the most powerful thing in the Bible to say that, G that God loves us that much. That he let Jesus go through all of this pain, all of this suffer. We've been tortured by man just because he loves us and this is so much worth. And I think today we can just remember what Jesus has done for us and be aware of the fact how much God loves us and how much he wants to be in relationship with us. God bless.